Uh, so, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, on behalf of the Center for Policy Studies, uh, I welcome you at this event supported by the International Visegrad Fund. And uh, I'm glad to welcome our today's speaker. Uh, Sharka Prat is the executive director of the Institute for Politics and Society in Prague. And we are going to uh, have a presentation on digital technologies progress in the Czech Republic. So thank you for joining us today and the floor is yours. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Victoria. <laughs> I guess uh, so far we are just two of us. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, uh, so my name is uh, Sharka. I'm from the Czech Republic. I'm executive director of the Institute for Politics and Society, uh, which is a think tank which was established by Prime Minister. So we were established uh, seven years ago and uh, we cooperate uh, closely with the government of the Czech Republic and uh, with, uh, like with ministries and uh, with the uh, uh, European Commission and uh, European Parliament. Uh, first, uh, just to tell you something about the Czech Republic, we are not the biggest country ever. <laughs> we have uh, like uh, 10 million inhabitants. Uh, we have very small unemployment rate and uh, quite okay inflation rate, 2.8% uh, unemployment, and unemployment rate is just 2%, so it's almost like nothing. Uh, everything uh, is based actually in Prague. Uh, so more or less like all the ministries, all the government office and uh, so on and so forth. As we are also based in Prague uh, to have easier communication. Uh, what uh, I would like to talk about today is about the e-government because it's one of our main projects which uh, we are working on and uh, we take as an e-government as the administration of uh, public affairs. Uh, with the help of modern electronic tools, uh, which will make public administration more user-friendly, accessible and efficient, and of course, faster and uh, cheaper. Uh, we see as an e-government as a possibility for citizens to carry out their administrative procedures uh, via the internet, uh, whether it's a question of paying their taxes or registering their vehicle, or managing benefits or medical files or even voting. Uh, it also means enabling them to interact uh, easily with the authorities thanks to new technologies and uh, thanks to adapting the administration uh, uh, to digital challenges. Uh, it has become a kind of national, but also it's a European priority. And in 2016, uh, through the EU e-government action plan, the European Commission encouraged uh, EU countries to implement e-government in order to make the administration more accessible to the population. And the EU e-government action plan is intended to be instrument to unite efforts while member states uh, pursue their own uh, strategies and activities. So this action plan sets out a number of principles uh, to deliver the considerable benefits that e-government can bring to business, public administrations and uh, citizens. Uh, what, who are the main actors of e-government? So are uh, well since mid uh, 2007, all e-government activity has been firmly positioned in the Ministry of the Interior, and uh, political responsibility lies with the minister and the deputy minister for strategies and uh, program management under the ministry. Uh, the chief architect of e-government at the Ministry of Interior is uh, responsible for implementing national e-government infrastructure projects and uh, all projects related to digital services. It provides uh, support to other government departments and bodies for the implementation of their e-government projects. Uh, the Department of E-Government, uh, situated within the Ministry of the Interior, is responsible for implementation of uh, key E-Government projects and administration of several central information systems. 
Uh, it provides uh, support and guidelines to so-called checkpoints. I will explain the checkpoints, what it is. Uh, the it's actually something like the National Network of Public Administration Contact Points. Uh, it also actively participates in the process of uh, drafting national e-governmental legislation. And the Ministry of Industry and Trade is also involved in the implementation of the government and uh, they do, for example, the agenda for the implementation of the international competitiveness strategy of the Czech Republic, uh, which was actually uh, this year it will be transferred back to the Ministry of Industry and Trade. Uh, because it uh, makes more sense to have it at one uh, at one ministry and the government council for information society and the government council for public administration perform the role of permanent advisory in the initiation and the coordination uh, body of the government and these two expert advisory bodies were created by the czech government in november 2014 and the government council for the information society is mainly responsible for conducting or coordinating the implementation of the strategic uh, framework of the development of uh, public administration in the czech republic um, I will tell you what was uh, implemented from 2007 till 2020, then what were the results and what is in a plan for a future. Uh, so the government strategies for, from 2007 to 2020, uh, there was uh, something like the construction of the different pillars of e-government, which took place during the programming period. Uh, with the use of funds from the European Union structural funds uh, in line with the strategy of uh, efficient public administration and uh, user-friendly public uh, services. And from 2011, many initiatives and strategies are gradually being created by the Czech government uh, to enable citizens uh, to communicate electronically with the administration. Uh, in 2011, the Ministry of Industry and Trade uh, presented the International Competitiveness Strategy. Uh, this document was the Czech Republic's overall, let's say, digital plan, and it contains uh, and sets out the initiatives and targets uh, that relate to e-government and uh, ICT modernization of the public sector. And the subtitle of the strategy is like back to top, we call it back to top, uh, characterizes the government's intention to become by 2020 one of the 20 most competitive countries in the world. I will see then the results how we did. Uh, in 2013, uh, the state policy on electronic communications has been adopted. So it's called like digital check uh, versus 2.0, the way to the digital economy. And uh, this uh, updated state policy is based on three pillars. Uh, on the promotion of the development of high quality infrastructure, the further expansion of digital services, and uh, fostering digital literacy. Uh, the main objective of the policy is to harness uh, the potential of the Czech Republic and to develop uh, modern information and communication technologies and services in compliance with the digital agent agenda of the EU, the government has set the target of achieving universal high speed internet access for the population of the Czech Republic. In 2014, the strategic framework of the development of public administration in the Czech Republic was approved by the government resolution. And uh, this strategy for the development of public administration formulated four objectives to be specified by the government council and achieved within the six year period. And the specified priorities cover the modernization of public administration, which included development of e-government, 
in particular the implementation of a unified and state guaranteed and EU interoperable online identification. Uh, also, there is an authentication and authorization system for the key information uh, in accordance with the regulation. Uh, then we have the national architecture plan and the national architecture framework, uh, which are being prepared as a part of the national e-government architecture. And it aims to uh, streamline uh, the work of public authorities through information technology. And the objective is to prepare the initial state of the Czech e-government with its development plan within five years. Uh, in 2016, uh, the strategy of electronization of public procurement uh, was a conceptual document of the government of the Czech Republic for the introduction of information and communication technologies into public procurement. And it covers uh, public procurement systems, uh, which are managed by the Ministry of Regional Development of the Czech Republic. Uh, for example, like electronic public marketplaces or the national electronic instrument and the public procurement information system. What's very interesting uh, was the, or according to me, it's very important, the national e-health strategy, which was implemented in 2016, uh, which must benefit patients and the quality of healthcare and the patient's right to adequate care, the protection of personal dignity and the protection of personal data must not be weakened, but rather strengthened by the introduction of e-health resources. Uh, one of the main principles of the national e-health strategy is the openness and uh, participation of the widest possible professional and non-professional public among the users of e-health. And the Ministry of Health states uh, the clear intention to create a familiar environment for all those responsible for the implementation of e-health service. I will then tell you the exact points which they introduce, the exact tools, because they are very interesting. In 2018, a strategy called Digital Czech Republic was launched by the government. Uh, to focus on the strategy of coordinated and comprehensive digitalization on the Czech Republic. And uh, this consists of a set of concepts that ensure the long-term prosperity of the Czech Republic and the environment of the ongoing digital revolution. Uh, the strategy consists of the higher level objectives uh, of three partial strategies. One of them is uh, interaction of the Czech Republic in the European Union in the field of digital agenda. And uh, it uh, talks about the institutional provision of coordination and financing of the implementation and uh, ensuring communication on uh, current topics and opportunities in the digital agenda. And uh, then uh, the second one is digital pub public administration. Uh, which has to be user-friendly and efficient uh, online services for citizens and business people, uh, digitally friendly legislation, developing an overall environment uh, conductive to, uh, to digital technology, and efficient and centrally coordinated ICT for public administration. And the third one is the preparation and interaction of the society and the economy of the Czech Republic for the consumption of digitalization. Uh, that means uh, the digitalization of public uh, administration services, better public administration monitoring system, launch of the citizens portal uh, as a transactional uh, part of the public administration portal and uh, implementation of e invoicing and uh, for example what's very important what we use a lot is cross-border electronic identification and uh, now implementation of ongoing e-health and uh, the main objectives of the program is to strengthen all the initiatives and projects uh i'm sorry my dog just came here i have to kick him out uh called for in previous government yeah Call for like previous government strategies. Uh, and uh, we have a lot of legislations uh, which were introduced. Uh, 
And so I will just briefly mention uh, that uh, they provide a legal framework for the establishment of e-government in the Czech Republic. And these legal documents uh, regulate the following areas, for example, access to public information and uh, electronic identification and uh, trust services or security aspects related to digital government and uh, interconnection of basic registers and online public uh, procurement. Um, and uh, now what I think what is uh, probably the most interesting to see are our digital tools for citizens. Uh, we use a lot of platforms and uh, actually the various strategies uh, adopted by the Czech Republic allow for the gradual introduction of digital tools uh, to ensure the country's transition to the digital age. And uh, several objectives have been set by different government strategies and some of these goals have been achieved but others need more time. Uh, we will see which ones. So, uh, and there are different platforms which make it easier for citizens to communicate with the administration. In uh, 2008, uh, the public administration contact points, so-called checkpoint, uh, were created and uh, they can be considered as a central government initiative. And this uh, checkpoint is a network of contact points where citizens can request and extract from public and non-public registers and the records and file a complaint with the public administration. Uh, these checkpoint services for the public uh, can generally be divided into a few categories. Uh, they provide like the extracts from public administration information systems, for example, extract from the criminal register or the real estate cadaster. You need it, for example, for your work when you are when you apply for a new job, you have to show them your criminal register. You just go to the, for example, post office, where is one of these checkpoints and you ask for that and you have it like within a minute. So that's the same for real estate cadaster when you want to buy or build a new house. So also if you need uh, some information, you just go to your nearest uh, post office, uh, which is uh, marked by checkpoint, and then you can uh, get this information. Uh, also, this covers like the submission to the state administration, for example, if you want to register your trade that you just establish a new company, so you can also do it like your business, you can register at uh, these uh, checkpoints or also like the basic registers, uh, for example, when you need some extracts from basic registers or submission uh, of a request for data change, that something just changed, I don't know, you got married, for example, or, or you just uh, changed something uh, regarding your where you are currently living. Uh, so you, it's very easy and you just uh, ask for that and you can do it. You don't have to go to the municipality hall. You don't have to go to the government office. You just ask it at uh, these uh, data points. Um, we also have data boxes, uh, uh, which request to set up a data box. Uh, uh, but you can uh, request to invalidate access date and uh, issue new ones. So for example, like we were supposed to pay now all of us taxes. And if I have this uh, data box, I can do it everything like online quickly. It's very initiative and I don't have to go to the, any like building. I don't have to like fill in any forms because I can just submit it online. Uh, and uh, it also helps you like they, they are like online uh, guides what you are missing and it will not let you to make a mistake actually. So it will also save you money that you don't have to hire the accountant for doing that because you can certainly do it by yourself if you follow the rules. Um, these services are provided by public administration contact points, uh, which bear the blue checkpoint logo. Uh, checkpoint are notaries, so regional authorities, municipal authorities, or district or borough authorities, but also embassies abroad and uh, what I use the most are the post offices because they are like everywhere or it can be also the Chamber of Commerce and also some banks licensed by the Ministry of the Interior. Um, more and more citizens are using uh, or are choosing to use the checkpoint. 
you can see now on the map uh, how many are there in the Czech Republic. So, for example, in Prague, you, you see that it's quite a lot, but it's not just in Prague, uh, which is the capital. But if you uh, look uh, on Brno, where is 1,300? Yeah, so it's like it's and Brno has 600,000 uh, inhabitants. So it's not like really huge uh, city. And there are like 1,000 of these offices. So uh, it's really convenient uh, and uh, more and more citizens are choosing it to use, uh, to use it for communication and to communicate directly with the authorities. So we are also those data boxes than to have a face-to-face -face meeting in an office. Uh, the, what is it used for more are the criminal records and because you really need it for getting a new job and uh, for example the cadastre when you are buying a new flat house or building a new one. Um, this data box information system is an e-delivery solution intended for the delivery of official documents and to communicate with the public authorities. Uh, I have to admit, I think it could be a little bit more developed because uh, it took me a f more time than I thought it would be to just set up the data box, when, uh, but once you have it, it's very easy and it's really convenient. Uh, then we have a portals for citizens. So I would definitely um, would like to mention the public administration portal. Uh, which was implemented in 2012 and it's an official digital getaway for state guaranteed information and uh, services for citizens or even uh, businesses and uh, institutions enabling uh, these uh, actors to communicate with uh, public administration entities. And the portal uh, gathers the necessary information on central and uh, local governments and provides a search, search function and information on services related to everyday life. So, for example, on the website, you can find information on different issues, such as, for example, for justice, so application for divorce or what you need for your getting married or like some documents for adoption adoption of the child or for employment or unemployment like for example employment conditions including posted workers or uh, for taxes uh, and the finances or regarding your health care i will definitely get to the health care because i think we made really nice progress recently and it, it wasn't easy, but uh, I think now it's worth it. Um, well, something about the citizens uh, portal or uh, citizens portal allows communication with the authorities and it requires digital identification to access several fully automated digital services, such as providing extracts uh, from uh, basic state registers and providing information on the current status of uh, citizens applications uh, to the public administration. And uh, the portal also provides access to digital services uh, provided by the Czech Social Security Administration or the Financial Administration and Land Registry and the Business License Registry. So personal identification and authentication on the portal is provided by the National Electronic Identity Card uh, using the uh, identification information from the data box. Or you can just like have an option for name and password, but uh, it will be it's it has to be registered before uh, they have to like confirm that it's really you, and then you can just communicate uh, just uh, by using it's it's something like email, but it's so uh, really provided uh, for only registered people who can prove that uh, their identity. Uh, the National Identity Authority portal is the national point portal for electronic identification and authentication, and it provides citizens with uh, information on how to establish a state guaranteed digital identity and how to access the government's personalized and secure digital services. And the data mailbox system uh, is a national secure electronic delivery solution 
and the data mailbox uh, credentials can also be used uh, for electronic uh, identification and authentication of users of uh, government digital services. In 2019, there were new features so which were added to the system, uh, including mobile access. So now you have like kind of mobile key uh, or it's like an app on your phone and uh, you can confirm everything through it's like when you do like your bank with something with your bank account when you are sending the payments uh the czech social security administration uh, allows citizens and employers to access information stored in the administration databases and send requests online and uh, receive answers digitally so the specific online services are available for different client groups for example services for individuals include online access to information on paid sick leave or health insurance uh, payments and uh, online pension calculation for example i have an app in my phone and uh, i am sending something to my pension account and it will count like in uh, like uh, according to what i am sending according to what uh, i receive from a state and according to what i receive from my employer uh, it shows me that uh, once you retire you should have this and this amount and you can change it you can play with it uh, if you want to have more or less uh, if it was really paid by your employer and so on and uh it's really good with a paid uh, sick leave which is uh, now used when uh, people couldn't like actually go to the doctor much regarding the coronavirus uh they could communicate also with the doctor just uh, online i will talk about it a little bit more uh then uh, we have the e-tax portal of the czech financial administration uh, which provides access to the necessary information on the national tax system and the corresponding electronic forms. And the application uh, electronic submission to the financial administration allows to file tax returns and other documents electronically. And the VAT payers register application allows checking the reliability of VAT payers and the uh, registered bank accounts of VAT payers by tax identification number. Uh, we have also something like electronic portal of local self-governments, which contains an up-to-date uh, database of uh, self-governing entities in the Czech Republic. And the main objective of the portal is to promote the communication between the public administration and citizens and uh, it's also managed by the Ministry of the Interior, uh, Ministry of the Interior of the Czech Republic. Um, what I would uh, definitely like to mention is the, yeah, here you can see just some like examples how it uh, looks like logging into the citizens portal. It's called like citizens portal. Uh, so for logging in, you have to have your uh, like password and the login details, which you get after the registration. Uh, and the electronic identification is actually the strategic framework uh, for the development of public administration in the Czech Republic uh, and the strategic called Digital Czech Republic supported uh, the introduction of electronic identification in the framework uh, of uh, European Union so-called IDAS uh, or EIDAS uh regulation in the period uh, between 2014 and 20 and uh, it's not fully implemented in the czech republic it started to be implemented in 2018 but uh, we are still like uh, working on it uh, the country has been implementing laws to comply with eu regulation and uh, yeah and it, it, it like depends the we need to like work on the legal framework of the introduction oh there were uh, like in 2016 and 2017 some uh, like uh, issues uh, and uh, but these laws provide uh, some some so called legal basis for providing identity by means of electronic identification and uh, if the legal regulation or the exercise of powers requires proof of identity uh, then you can uh, use it just with your is your card uh, because uh, this ID card has so-called activated contact electronic chip and uh, 
with this activated chip, it provides so guaranteed proof of identity when using e-government services. And all ID cards uh, issued after 1st of July 2018 contain a chip uh, and the holder can then electronically sign documents, so emails, so contracts, uh, and under current legislation, a qualified uh, electronic signature has the same legal relevance as the handwritten signature. Uh, so with the new card, citizens will be able to carry out official acts such as filling tax returns, claiming employment benefits, paying pensions, communicating with health insurance companies and uh, from their computers and uh, without like leaving their homes. And uh, thanks to this process of electronic identification, documents will now be available for use all EU countries, which is enabled by an European directive that all member must uh, implement. For example, I have it. Uh, my mom doesn't have it because you have to. Uh, you would have to. Your ID card would have to expire for getting a new one, or you would have to like lose it or something like that. So like, uh, th there is still a transition. So some people still uh, use the old version of the ID card, but I see it with a new one. It's so easier. Like everything, I just put it there, and they just scan it, and I'm I'm done, and I, I don't have to prove uh, anything. Uh, so this was very, very pleasant uh, change for us. Um, uh, yeah, oh, I would say also the ID is uh, some kind of uh, an identification device that provides uh, guaranteed authentication uh, when logging into online services that require at least a significant level of trust of the identification means. Uh, you can also uh, create uh, the data box, so, but uh, anyway, for the data box, you need this ID card. Um, and now I would maybe mention the e-health, yeah, e-health and the COVID-19, because there was a really good improvement, uh, especially, uh, unfortunately, thanks to COVID. Uh, but e-health is uh, our uh, big topic. And there are the various government strategies and uh, especially the Digital Czech Republic strategy aimed at the gradual introduction of uh, digital tools in the field of health. And today Czech citizens have access to several useful tools resulting from these strategic plans. And in addition, the COVID-19 crisis requires a rethinking of digital tools and e-health. So it's in the context uh, that the teleconsultation platform was created. And so the Czech Republic has introduced its e-prescriptions. And uh, actually, despite uh, initial object objections and resistance, mainly from independent general practitioners, from doctors, today several million e-prescriptions are issued each month. For example, my mother is a doctor and she was also like against it. She said it will be like really like uh, administratively difficult and so on. Once they start to get into it, once the system started to run, the doctors love it because it's really easier. Uh, they just, uh, when you need a prescription, you don't have to go there. For example, if you are for a long time on some kind of uh, sick leave and you are using for, for a long time the, some medicament, and you run out of it, you don't have to go to doctor to get a new prescription. You just contact your doctor electronically and they can send you this prescription with the code. It's just a little code which you will receive to your uh, phone as a message. And with that, you go to pharmacy and you just pick it up there because they, according to the code and your name, they will find, okay, this is this and that, and they will give it to you. So now each, uh, like each uh, e-prescription carries information about the medicine prescribed, to the patient and uh, ensures an electronic exchange of this information between the doctor, the patient and the pharmacy and the health insurer. Uh, so from June 2020, any doctor treating a patient uh, is able to consult the patient's medication file uh, as well any pharmacist uh, dispensing medication to the patient. And when a doctor issues an e-prescription, it's stored in the central e-prescription repository and is accessible to the relevant pharmacy that dispenses the medicine. 
So the patient is free to choose how he or she will receive the e-prescription identifier. Paper identifiers are still the most common. Yeah, but uh, these messages, email and smartphone applications are also used. They start to be used more this year, obviously, because the people didn't go to the doctor that much uh, regarding the uh, isolation. Uh, what's uh, also new for us, it's uh, so-called electronic e-sick uh, note or sick leave. Uh, they were introduced for processing decisions on temporary incapacity to work. And the uh, employees inform their employer that they are ill by telephone or email without the need for paper forms. So employers uh, check the electronic sickness notification via the social security administration's web portal. And uh, they can also choose to receive their employee sickness notification via an electronic database and email alerts. So once the sick employee has uh, exceeded uh, the 14 days of sickness, he or she is entitled to health insurance benefits in the Czech Republic. That's why it's important to just like to know uh, when they started, when they finished and uh, so on. So you don't actually need to go to the doctor again or you don't have to submit it uh, personally. Uh, thanks to COVID, we have also like a teleconsultation platform, uh, which are called Video Doctor. Maybe I have some word. Uh, yeah, it's also you can see on like on the phone, Video Doctor, uh, and uh, which was created in 2020, last year, in the context of the current situation. And is the first platform to allow doctors and patients to easily make a secure telemedicine video call. And uh, the service is free of charge for doctors and patients. And the patient must uh, first register and can then request a video call with the doctor. Uh, not all doctors use it so far. So it, because it's new, it's like 2020. Um, and uh, uh, of course, it's easier for patients to communicate with the doctor online because uh, he doesn't have to go there. But it can be also, I think, a little bit uh, used too much so not all doctors want to use it but i think that they need time to get used to it for some of them love it some of them are still a little bit skeptic uh so and so how did we do in uh, in our like uh, european ranking of the czech republic um we thanks to all this introduction of digital tools uh, so in 2011, the Ministry of Industry and Trade uh, presented the international competitiveness. Uh, so you can see on the slide uh, how did we did the ranking among the countries of uh, European Union. You know, there is still Great Britain because it uh, was for 2020. Uh, and uh, we see that somewhere we did well, somewhere we did not. Uh, the ministry wanted to make the Czech Republic one of the 20 most competitive countries in the world by 2020. And in 2020, the European Commission revealed the Digital Economy and Society, Society Index, which monitors Europe, uh, Europe's uh, overall digital performance and tracks the progress of uh, EU countries in digital competitiveness. And the Czech Republic is ranked 17th out of 28 European countries. Uh, so interpreting this data, it becomes clear that the large, that some targets uh, haven't been fully achieved and so uh, further measures need to be put in place. Uh, so we have now the new strategies for 2030. And uh, in uh, 2020, Eurostat actually conducted a survey to measure the number of Czech citizens who use the internet uh, to interact with the public administration. And as the following chart uh, shows, the general trend uh, is upwards, uh, which means that the number of people using digital tools is increasing. Uh, the implementation of uh, e-government becomes a central and current issue. And uh, since 2020, 
uh, the COVID-19 pandemic has uh, highlighted the flaws uh, in current digital systems and called for rapid adaption. And policies that deepen uh, e-government have become increasingly necessary. So we have uh, new governmental strategies uh, and uh, well, improving the access to public information is one of the nation's uh, priorities. Any government is becoming increasingly specialized to become faster and more efficient for entrepreneurs and consumers. And the innovation strategy of the Czech Republic uh, till to 2030 was adapted by the government of the Czech Republic and prepared by the Research and Development Council, which is headed by Prime Minister Andrei Babiš. That's uh, the Prime Minister who has established our institute in uh, close cooperation with a team of entrepreneurs, scientists, uh, academists, and representatives of the public administration. And the strategy sets new priorities and aims to make the Czech Republic one of the most innovative countries in Europe by 2030. Uh, and in addition to initiatives uh, focused on digital government and services, the strategy includes eight other strategic pillars, namely research and development funding and evaluation, uh, polytechnic education, uh, national environment for startups and spin-offs, uh, innovation and research centers uh, and smart investment, uh, intellectual property protection, uh, mobility and construction environment and smart marketing. Uh, in 2020, the government approved a strategic document uh, called Implementation and Development of 5G Networks in the Czech Republic. And it defines a national strategy for 5G deployment uh, in the coming years. And it's part of the Digital Czech Republic concept. Uh, and the innovation strategy of the Czech Republic. And then we have the plan on systematic reduction of administrative burdens for entrepreneurs, uh, which defines 90 improvement measures uh, aimed at uh, simplifying 33 legislative acts and impacting 133 obligations to be met by entrepreneurs. Within the framework of uh, this plan, 21 digital projects focusing on e-government have been defined, uh, as well as uh, other measures proposed by central administration in neighboring countries. And uh, the customer-oriented public administration uh, was introduced as a new concept for the development of a public administration. It's customer-oriented public administration, which seeks to increase citizen satisfaction, this public administration and its services, and to make the functioning of public uh, administration more uh, efficient. So to achieve this goal, the strategy uses a wide range of tools uh, for example, reorganization of the public administration on the territory or a better communication with citizens, better horizontal coordination of the public administration, or there are more emphasizes on supporting innovations. And uh, there were some changes in legislation. Uh, so like all laws adopted before 2020 are still valid today. Uh, only uh, some of them were a little bit amended and uh, the amendments uh, aims to adapt the administration and the legal framework to the new digital needs and to support development of your government. So like the, uh, the governmental portal and the national network of the Czech Republic and the rules for performing the function of assisted public administration office so-called checkpoint, uh, are also covered uh, uh, for a little bit of development in addition to some of the internal operations of the IT systems of the public administration. Then uh, I prepare for you something a little bit about the Czech experience regarding the artificial intelligence. Uh, because the National Artificial Intelligence Strategy of the Czech Republic aims to achieve the full potential of the digital transformation. 
uh, and the strategy sets out a series of objectives and priorities to support AI development and its uh, use in the academic, public and private sectors. Uh, the national AI strategy follows up on and uh, attains uh, the objectives of the government innovation strategy and it's linked to the Digital Czech Republic program. So the AI Observatory and uh, Forum of the Czech Republic was appointed as an expert platform uh, to contribute to the European discussion on a uh, future uh, regulation of uh, artificial intelligence in the EU. And uh, what uh, we see as a main benefits of artificial intelligence is uh, faster adaption to the global economy and uh, faster automation, uh, which will lead to productivity gains in inputs and uh, GDP and wages. Uh, also, like artificial intelligence uh, allows uh, machines to take over routine and repeatable activities as well as uh, tedious ones. Uh, but uh, we know that there are a lot of uh, challenges uh, because, for example, transformation of the labor market uh, where the technology can uh, replace uh, some, uh, uh, some, skill, some, some skills uh, which are required. Uh, so this uh, requires the adaptation not only of the social security and a retraining system, but also of the whole educational process. And there is also the ethical problem, uh, which uh, include algorithmic bias and uh, classification of people and limitation of their autonomy, uh, invasion of privacy. Uh, let's say that in Czech Republic, there is a little bit uh, skepticism about it, but uh, that's uh, the job of the government to show the benefits that it can just help us. So as uh, AI systems continue to impact society and citizens, the national AI strategies are attempting to capture economic prosperity and uh, remain competitive in the 21st century. And in the world of artificial intelligence, keywords such as algorithms, automation, and big data are increasingly becoming commonplace. And uh, they are primarily driven by an uh, AI resurgence uh, in the private sector that has uh, seeped into all aspects of society. And there was the Czech Republic's National Artificial Intelligence Strategy, uh, which was published in May 2019. And this strategy is influenced by the European Union's approach on trustworthy AI. And this notion is uh, emanating from the appointment of the high level expert group of uh, AI and its key publications, uh, primarily the ethic guidelines for trustworthy AI. And uh, this, uh, this, uh, uh, this strategy actually has an explicitly linked uh, as the seven key requirements, but uh, can be seen in a light of the preceding European AI strategy from 2018. So the European uh, AI strategy was in April 2018, Czech strategy was May 2019, and uh, the communication puts forward a human-centric uh, approach to AI, whereby AI is not uh, an end in itself, but a tool that has to serve people with the ultimate aim of increasing human well-being. And uh, the strategy encompasses uh, nearly all aspects indirectly with the aim of improving the country's economic growth and competitiveness uh, in AI by creating uh, favorable policy conditions. And the analysis provides a list of tools and tasks and the main coordinating role is assigned to the Ministry of Industry and Trade with the aim that the strategy is to be continually reviewed on a yearly basis with uh, reports on the fulfillment of objectives and proposals to revise objectives and instruments. As uh, the strategy takes shape, an AI committee has been established to supervise its implementation. And the strategy is uh, compatible with uh, previous industry policy documents 
such as uh, Industry 4.0 and a national initiative that aimed at maintaining and enhancing the competitiveness of the Czech Republic in the wake of the so-called fourth industrial revolution. Uh, more importantly, the strategy is explicitly referring to the official EU strategies, while significant uh, salience is also given to the national innovation strategy of the Czech Republic. And as the stated intent is to complement and expand upon it, alongside uh, the similarly important government strategy, digital economy and society. Uh, if I still have a time, I would talk more about that analysis, if I can, from the organizer, I hope, yeah. Uh, so the uh, advances in the application of artificial intelligence seems to uh, have gained momentum in the past decade, uh, bringing uh, like forth national initiatives and strategies to capture competitive advantages of uh, economic growth and uh, beneficial societal impacts and member states were encouraged to develop their national AI strategy by mid-2019, uh, building on the work done on the European level. Uh, so the European strategy on artificial intelligence uh, is uh, led or is composed of appointed experts and uh, for, to, to present recommendations on future related policy developments and on ethical, legal and uh, social issues related to AI, including socioeconomic challenges. And the ethic guidelines for trustworthy AI were published uh, in April 2019, along uh, with 33 proposed policy and investment recommendations for trustworthy AI. And these documents uh, were addressed to European Union institutions and member states and were published in June 2019. So additional emphasis uh, on building an ecosystem of trust appeared in the Commission's white paper on artificial intelligence, which was published in February 2020. And although the Czech Republic's analysis was released in May 2019, only a month after the ethic guideline for trustworthy AI, the strategy draws reference to guidelines and publications that align with the pan-European approach and is inspired by similar foreign strategic documents. And the analysis uh, was uh, created in collaboration with a diverse team of uh, experts from academia as well as the private sector. And uh, among them are representatives of ministries, institutions, and experts uh, from the Academy of Science of the Czech Republic. And the stated goal is for the government and uh, public and private sectors to coordinate closely as uh, artificial intelligence systems improve while meeting the objectives of the government innovation uh, strategy. Uh, which was introduced and the AI committee that is assigned through the strategy is intended to be a subcommittee of the steering uh, committee of digital Czech Republic strategy so again it's under the all the digital concept uh, which is chaired by the deputy minister of industry and trade for digitization and innovation. We, we closely cooperate with this guy. His name is Petr Ochko, and uh, he's really, oh, really passionate about that. And he works hard on this topic. And uh, uh, for like, uh, he has a few like uh, standards and he helped us like to prepare also the conference about the digital Czech Republic. Uh, I will talk about it also a little bit later, uh, which was our main project. And uh, well, for some of the seven different uh, strands of AI policy that the report outlines, uh, other government departments are recruited to act as uh, coordinating members. And it's uh, the Ministry of Education, the Ministry of Labor and Social Affairs, the Office of the Government uh, of the Czech Republic. And it's through this uh, newly established AI committee that uh, the responsible ministers, so the deputy prime minister and the minister of industry and trade are implementing and coordinating the strategy as a whole. So the operational management of the AI committee will be continuously ensured by its executive committee. And uh, the strategy is divided into seven chapters and its key areas are research and development. So financing, industry, 
human capital, education, regulation, and international cooperation. And for each chapter, the strategy stipulates a responsible ministry as coordinator, uh, baseline providing the current state, the policy initiatives that will be developed, the cooperating entities, uh, tools, and methodology and the key objectives that are targeted at a short uh, term. Uh, short term is like till 2021, or mid term is like 2027, and there are some key uh, proposals or key objectives for long term until 2035. And the strategy also presents results from an empirical mapping of the industrial landscape intended to ground the report in actual data and uh, knowledge from practice. Uh, hence, uh, the annex includes uh, the results from a survey that was conducted among organizations and companies engaged in AI activities in both academia and private sector. And this survey was led by the Confederation of Industry, uh, who are responsible for making the initial evaluations of the corporate AI environment. So the members of the Confederation of Industry of the Czech Republic, all other member associations and organizations and the general public were approached uh, for the purpose of uh, mapping in uh, total thousands of entities uh, which were approached of uh, like by 50 companies uh, which decided to become involved at this stage. And this quantitative mapping uh, gives uh, indicative data on the applications and development areas of AI, methods used in AI, and the sectors of integration of AI, uh, and the distribution across various industries and in the Czech Republic. So the application uh, development areas of AI that were most often mentioned uh, were information and communication activities and business process support. And the sectors that were most often uh, mentioned to were corporate uh, AI and software development. So 44% of participants highlighted the importance of education and retraining of workers, uh, which the strategy also covers in its fourth chapter, and uh, which uh, addresses human capital and the education system and lifelong learning. Uh, and also address the impact of AI on the labor market and social systems. Uh, one of the primary focuses uh, were the transnational ambitions uh, to build European centers of excellence in AI research and so, so called innovation hubs, uh, which are given clear prominence and the perspective establishment of a European Center of Excellence in AI based on a consortium of academic research institutes is outlined to be based in the capital in Prague and to reach through the Czech Republic. So this, uh, this is so uh, concordant uh, with uh, the EU strategy recommendations on policy and investment, uh, which uh, highlights uh, the aim of ensuring world-class research capabilities in AI within the EU. And the strategy plans uh, integrated uh, systems of uh, transfer of academic know-how into the EU well in 2035 with the goal of making the Czech Republic an attractive AI research destination uh, that would be connected with other centers through the EU further expanding academic research on an international stage. And this is uh, fulfilled by deepening cooperation with global AI centers, as well as maintaining top research and experts in the Czech Republic. And the keywords of the, of the plan or of the report seem to be competitiveness in uh, research and uh, development and uh, digital infrastructure and uh, commercially, uh, commercially viable innovations. So the main objective appears to be the concentration of uh, excellent uh, research and development, in particular by supporting the creation of the European Center of Excellence, uh, Test Center and Digital Innovation Hubs. Uh, and so the, the seven strands uh, that are co-constitutive uh, co of such an agenda uh, are the conditions for attracting top foreign talent, 
funding uh, for research, uh, the development of startups, provision of digital infrastructure, and uh, education and lifelong learning, both technical and humanities oriented. For example, in Czech Republic, we have a problem that now everyone is studying the university, but no one knows how to repair like oh, basic stuff at home. Uh, uh, adaptable social welfare system, uh, legislation, ensuring the protection of fundamental rights and security and uh, international cooperation, I'm sorry, um, international cooperation and involvement, especially at the EU level. Uh, for each of these seven strands, uh, the report outlines a set of tools, partners and short, medium and long term objectives. And in the listed strategic documents, the publications and guidelines of uh, like uh, AI are uh, not present, but uh, reference to communications from the European Commission, uh, Com Commission on a Coordinated Plan on Artificial Intelligence in Europe uh, are there. And the um, strategy is kind of all structured and there are clear objectives. Uh, which are laid out through the seven vertically divided chapters. And the overall aim of the strategy is to improve the country's economic growth and the competitiveness in AI by creating favorable policy conditions, all while maintaining a high level of protection of fundamental and other rights, and in the line with the European approach of human-centric AI. Uh, yeah, I can talk. I don't know if I should continue or if you have some questions, maybe I can switch it on here. Uh, well, you you may continue, of course, and uh, you mentioned the annual conference. Yes, uh, yes, definitely. Check. Maybe uh, you might introduce that as well. I checked the website to some extent uh, for our experts. It might be interesting as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so the digital, oh, this is like a digital conference. Uh, this is actually on the picture. I don't know if you can see him, but that's the guy who is the mainly responsible at the Ministry of uh, Interior uh, for this like digitalization. His name is Petr Ochko. Uh, so this conference uh, already takes place like uh, for, or it just took place uh, for the six times uh, now in May. Uh, it's two days long conference. So first day is always targeted more on the national issues. Uh, and the second day is targeted on the international issues. Uh, I don't know, maybe I can show you the program. Uh, did I edit there? Yeah. I will move this. So you can see a little bit of the uh, program. Uh, so it's always uh, introduced by uh, by Prime Minister of the Czech Republic, because digitalization is one of his main topic, or it's the main topic of the government, correction. Uh, and uh, so first day, uh, they are mostly the ministries, like the Minister uh, of uh, Industry and Trade, uh, Minister of uh, Finance, and uh, Minister of uh, Interior Affairs. And the second day, when it's more international, there is a minister of uh, education and uh, minister of uh, justice. Uh, and now uh, we combine there like the, the, the professionals from academic spheres uh, and the professionals from like the political world. And uh, then the business experts, we invite the speakers from all around the world. So it's like international conference and uh, the main topics uh, are always according to the main priorities, uh, which are being dealt uh, in the European Union or in the Czech Republic. So maybe, I don't know if we have this in, you can see something like that yeah but i would just a second i will try to switch this
I will try to then later like uh, show you the video which we prepare from the conference because it's uh, I would say quite good. And uh, so our main topics is about the e-finance, about the competitiveness, about the educations, about the e-government uh, and uh, about uh, the artificial intelligence, uh, sometimes also the security because it's connected to the artificial intelligence. And um, there are usually the ministers, they uh, introduce their, their plan for next year, what they are gonna do regarding the digitalization in their own field. Yeah, and uh, they discuss it with the economists or with the academists. Uh, and then after uh, always uh, next year, then we just like uh, gather the informations together and we can see what Czech Republic achieved and what uh, they did not, what they still have to work on. And so, yeah, and if there was some kind of uh, progress uh, towards uh, being more digital. So I am really, it's really pity that I can really uh, send, I can't really show it to you because that would be nice. YouTube, I'll try this. Um, digital check Republic. Yeah, these are like we always record everything from the from the video, so or from the conference. So that's so uh, yeah. Uh, I will try one more thing. So then uh, also the people, it's uh, possible to attend it uh, personally, like physically or uh, online. Uh, uh, of course, now we had to do everything online because it wasn't that uh, uh, easy. Yeah, I can play it right now, so I'll try it. Okay, only two versions. <laughs> So I hope you could. Uh -huh. Sorry. Sorry. Can you hear me now? Yeah. I hope you could hear the voice as well. Was it possible? Not. Well, so uh, so this was our concept of the digital Republic, which we uh, work on every year, and then we have like their. Uh, 
like uh, what we actually captured so we can actually compare it to literally what was said and what was uh, accomplished as i said so, so this is uh, uh, sorry uh, uh, there is some is echo now maybe the second microphone the government is, also is a up. european commission there is always at least one uh, or two yeah. commissioners can, we had there please, also uh, the commission uh, seems you have two microphones turned off turned so there is an echo i had there is an echo okay uh i think anyway i can just disconnect this because uh i'm not i have nothing else to present do you hear me now yes uh, yes sorry, sorry 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 yes so so this was so uh, th this project is so uh, closely cooperated uh or uh, we closely cooperate uh, on it with the uh, government, with the uh, European Commission, and uh, with the uh, Parliament and with the ministries. We uh, always have uh, support of a uh, Minister of Industry, Minister of Interior Affairs, and Minister of Education and Minister of Finance. Every year they are there. Every year they just like support it and they present their main topics. And uh, two years ago, we had there like Euro Commission of Estager, which was uh, very nice because uh, the conference was also supported by uh, Google. And the commissioner was just about to like fight against uh, Google. And uh, so there was so nice, so uh, let's say, exchange of the views there. And uh, it had a good impact. So it's, it's also followed by oh, 15,000 uh, people uh who cannot of course uh, in physically physically it's like for, for 500 people but like uh, then it's watched by 15000 people uh, online yes so so i i would say this is that's all from my side um uh, thank you very much for the presentation uh, thank you so much and uh, uh, during the parts about uh, e-government and artificial intelligence uh, there were some people from the ministry of territorial administration infrastructure also present but uh, now uh, our expert working on a paper on some e-governance in armenia with some policy recommendations victoria may have some questions yeah uh, thank you, Armen. Uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Pratt. Uh, it was such an informative and enjoyable presentation, and it made me to formulate a set of questions, uh, which I'm sure that uh, will comprehensively uh, allow me to digest your experience, because it was uh, very rich, and uh, let's say it can easily serve as uh, an indicator for us to implement a new types of uh, reforms and changes in the system of our um, electoral governance. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, if I may, I will start a very from a very general question. Uh, I think you will agree with me that in order to implement a proper electoral governance system, we need to have an uh, informative society with uh, digital skills and tools able to implement. Uh, if you have such kind of uh, problem in your country, in order to uh, provide a digital leader, a digital literal society for proper electoral governance systems, how uh, and which are your uh, tactics and strategies to overcome this problem and formulate a real digital, literal, uh, modern, informative society to be able to implement uh, these e-tools in your country. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, for example, yeah, we, we have the same problem. It's, of course, easier with a younger generation because they are like used to have uh, their uh, laptop all the time. It's so uh, harder with the uh, with the older generation, what uh, government actually offers now is uh, they are free, free uh, so-called IT uh, sessions or courses. So for uh, elderly people, and um, 
so they can actually ask they are like the advertisement uh, in the city that uh, if you want to learn a little bit more about uh, how to use the laptop how to communicate digitally you can attend these lessons so they are for free you don't even have to have your own laptop because they provide you that because it's some kind of let's say school or like the the room with a few computers and uh, there is a tutor uh, which uh, expects uh, the people to be older so he knows that he has to take it like from the basic steps and uh, you can attend it uh, and it's not limited that you can just attend it once if you didn't understand it you can retake it for example my grandfather went through it twice yeah, and he really enjoyed it. And my grandfather is 87 years old. And yesterday he was paying like, uh, he's constantly sending some emails. Yesterday he was uh, uh, doing something with internet banking and everything. So it was really convenient for him, especially for this time, because he had some problem with the bank. And he said, I will have to go there, but the banks are closed. I said like, no, but you know that you don't have to go there. And I showed him and he said, oh, yeah, I remember. And he knew everything and it's like super active. And for 87 years old, it's like, like excellent he also like uses thanks to this uh, training he uses uh, whatsapp uh he knows how to like use the id identification like system for uh, this e-government so now i would say he actually uses it more than i do uh, okay thank you and what about um uh, some statistics related to the usage of uh, e-tools in regions of czech republic mm -hmm. and in the capital yeah, Is there yeah. A yeah that that's that's a good question um uh... It uh, usually depends on the municipality hall. We have like 13 regions in the Czech Republic, 13 plus Prague, yeah. So we can compare it like that. Of course, the best results are still in Prague uh, because uh, they are also these, uh, like uh, the, the city is bigger. They are more like premises for daily rolling these classes. And uh, on the other hand, they are less uh, older people than uh, in the other towns. Uh, so the, the thing is that uh, spreading news in Prague is uh, usually a little bit easier because everything is more closer together. And in uh, other cities, it's uh, more like that the person has to actually see the advertisement, has to be reached by that. And uh, this is a little bit of uh, communication strategy which should be still uh, developed. Uh, but uh, it's uh, it really depends who is the I would say mayor in the region or in the town because it also depends on their initiativeness. Uh, it's not uh, something what they have to do. It's something what they can do. So if they want to do it, they can be better. So for example, we have few more smaller cities. Uh, like originally, I am not from Prague either. I am from Mihlava. We have 50,000 inhabitants. And the campaign for this uh, digitalization was really good here. Yeah, because the mayor is a young lady. She's like 35 years old. And she knows that it's important to do this. And so she really like invested money in this. And then the people knew about uh, where to go, how to do it, and uh, how to work with it. So another question, maybe also a general one, but I think it's very important to understand because we learn not only uh, for best uh, experiences, but also uh, from failures, which is, uh, let's say, key three failures on the way of digitalization in your republic. For example, personally, I would say it's a data boxes because it's not really that easy to set it up. Yeah. And so I think it should be more initiative because even for me, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like even for me, it's like I, I, I was annoyed by that. And so it's not that clear. And uh, the other one would be that uh, e portal for the. Uh, how do they call it in English uh, citizen portal citizen portal there are so many options you know and you just like uh, see too many like lines and everything and just you you then sometimes just so uh, say okay whatever I will prefer to go to the municipality hall because I know I will need just one paper I will give it there and even when it would be through the internet easier but because the the website is so confusing and so many things you can do at once it should be better distributed so that that's that I would say as a 
as the other one. And uh, we are still uh, working on a complete uh, introduction of that uh, uh, electronic ID card. As I said, that it's still in the process because of some legal issues, and uh, it's uh, different uh, because uh, it's not that it is easy to change it. Yes, of course, but uh, some people just uh, are not uh, trustworthy, and yeah, and that, that brings me to the fourth one. Uh, oh, what I think uh, that the people uh, need to know a little bit more about the benefits and not about being scared that their information will be misused. Because you always can read in the news like, okay, the information uh, leaked from Facebook or stuff like that. And uh, people are really skeptic regarding this here, especially in the Czech Republic, which is very interesting because they don't worry. We have 10 million inhabitants, five and a half million inhabitants are using Facebook. And then they are scared of uh, sharing the, where they share everything about their life. Yeah. And then they are like scared of uh, sharing the medical uh, records, uh, which are much more protective uh, than uh, Facebook. So I think the communication from government should be also a little bit more clear of what kind of benefits it can give to the, to the citizens. Sorry, I am so not to yeah. another uh, uh, to another questions, if I may, of course. Sure. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, yeah. I'm very interested in, um, let's say, in uh, COVID-19 situation, because uh, you also mentioned about that, that due to COVID, uh, we, uh, uh, we have noticed a, a significant, uh, let's say, peaks in uh, the process of digitalization. Uh, uh, it's in Armenia. In Armenia is the same situation, actually. But I'm very interested in your opinion related to whether you think that uh, COVID-19 um, uh, made significant re reforms in uh, the process of digitalization, or it's just a, a necessary, spontaneous respond of the state and people on this crisis. And it's just um, uh, tools and applications which are used temporarily and uh, which uh, wouldn't be a significant input in the development uh, of e-governance in the future. How will you assess this situation? Mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't say that it was uh, spontaneous here because we knew that it was coming. For example, e-prescriptions or these e-sick leaves and the COVID-19 just speed it up. It was, I would say, convenient for these people who were who wanted to introduce it that this was like you see this is a perfect time and to start to use it because like this this would solve a lot of things and it actually did that it was uh, like being prepared for many years. Yeah, I knew that we were talking talking about the e-prescription since two thousand sixteen, so it's just like the the not a coincidence but it was the right time to start to use it in 2020 because everything all people who are against it now they had an even bigger reason to go for it so this is the transformation isn't that easy from like one day to another or even one year to another but it was a systematic uh, preparation and there was a strategy and there was a plan and uh, the situation helped to use some tools earlier than the others yeah, I don't. I, I wouldn't say that if there, we wouldn't have a COVID, that we wouldn't start to use it. We would definitely. Yeah, but it just help to introduce it now in this time. So, uh, what was interesting was uh, that uh, video doctor. I haven't used it. I have to admit, I haven't used a video doctor. Uh, but uh, this this was something you which was. Actually, yeah, that was more like developed due to the COVID because no, there wasn't. It wasn't in a plan like e uh, e sick leave or like a e prescription. That was already in plan. Uh, you know, uh, in Armenia there is a low rate of uh, vaccination. Um, 
And uh, I'm very interested uh, whether we can use electoral systems and electoral tools to promote and boost the process of vaccination in the country. Maybe you have such an example. Yeah, uh, we had everything like all registration for the vaccine went online. Yeah, uh, so <laughs> I wouldn't use us as a best example because they introduced like a super great system online where you could uh, find everything. But uh, during the first moment when the people could like log in and start to register themselves, everything felt, everything collapsed. Yeah. Uh, and then they had to rechange it. And then they found uh, some bugs because they did it too quickly. And so there was, for example, the people who were born before 1930, they have a little bit uh, shorter, like a uh, uh, number, like a uh, birth uh, certification number. Yeah. And the system wasn't prepared for these people. So they couldn't even register. And the system was open for actually older people. So this was like one of a few bucks. So they had to redo it, redo it. So definitely it helped uh, to have the digitalization tools, but the Czech Republic did it too quickly and they didn't, uh, yeah, they didn't uh, catch all the bucks at the beginning. So it wasn't absolutely working and it was still easier to go to the doctor to arrange the shot that yeah because for example i had the first uh, vaccine uh when uh, i just went to the doctor and actually the doctor offered me if i want that they are available and uh, most of the people had to like go first register go through the vaccination center and so on and it takes more and more time so i think we are working on it but uh, it's not uh, I, I wouldn't take czech republic as a good example in this That's all for me. Uh, thank you for such an informative.